evening and welcome to this week's Tyrone. In just a few minutes, take a break from politics. You're probably all politicked out. We'll talk about local music. Jeff Bonomo from There and Back Again and Gene Babulo from All Sleep Sunday will join me right after we do this. We're coming up on primary day 2011 and there are judicial races. Oh boy, are there judicial races. There are 16 people running for 12 nominations, six Democrats and six Republicans in Luzerne County alone. There are judicial races in other counties in our viewing area and there are two statewide judicial primaries as well. Vic Stabile and Paula Patrick are running for the Republican nomination to face Democrat David Wecht in a superior court race and Paul Panapinto and Ann Covey face each other to see which will face either Catherine Buchvar or Barbara Ernsberger, the two Democrats in the fall in the Commonwealth race. Now, how much do you know about any one of these? Chances are not very much. This ballot is a perfect example of why merit selection for judges is much better than the silliness we do now. Now, under merit selection, a panel would be assembled. It would solicit applications for open judicial seats, review and interview the candidates, then issue recommendations to the Senate, which would approve and or disapprove. Now, there's no question it is extremely important who is on that panel. I wouldn't want the Bar Association, prosecutors, defense attorneys, or current judges alone picking new judges. But a panel with representation from all those groups and maybe somebody from the Senate, the public, the governor's office would be able to come up with people who actually qualified to sit on a bench. That is a much better system than the way we do it now, which is through nothing more than beauty contests. You couldn't come up with a poorer system to pick judges the way we do it now if you tried. I am seriously considering voting for no one running for any judicial seat this time and simply writing in merit selection for each open seat. Remember last year when every state legislator was falling all over every other one saying, I won't take the cola. Well, I wondered at the time how much of it was political posturing. Looks like all of it was. There is a bill in the House which would repeal that COLA, which was instituted about 15 years ago, and no one will move it out of committee onto the floor for a vote. It comes from Adams County's Dan Mowell. He is a Republican, so he took the bill to the Republican caucus. We was told, yeah, 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 Dan, we'll get around to it later. So he looked at Democrats for support. Some of those same Democrats who were so proud to tell you how they didn't take the COLA last year, well, none of them were interested in it either. It appears there is much more political expediency attached to a rejecting a cola than repealing it. Sad state of affairs. Also in Harrisburg, the state Senate has approved a bill that will allow licensed dealers to sell motorcycles on Sunday. It comes from Langhorn Republican Tommy Tomlinson. Now, he notes that neighboring states allow motorcycles on Sunday, and even Pennsylvania allows motorcycle merchandise and parts sales on Sunday, but not whole bikes. So why not allow sale of whole bikes? Indeed, why not? In fact, why not allow car sales on Sunday as well? But first things first, Tomlinson's bill should pass. This story makes me sick. I told you about it before, but there are new developments in it. It's the Texas cheerleader who was raped by a football player at a party. Uh, her name is H.C. or Hillier. That's not a real name. It happened when she was 16 in Silsby, Texas, when she first leveled her charges against Rakeem Bolton. He denied them, saying he would never do it because white women were ugly and the idea of sex with one made him sick. But he later changed his story and admitted it. He was charged with a minor assault count and given a suspended sentence, which in and of itself raises some questions. But Hillier couldn't bring herself to cheer for him, so the school kicked her off the cheerleader squad. It expected her, nay, it ordered her to cheer for the guy who raped her. She and her family filed suit and she lost. So she appealed. Again, she lost. As an appellate court ruled, a cheerleader was a mouthpiece for the school and had no right to remain silent. She asked the federal Supreme Court for an emergency ruling. It denied it this week without comment. So the lower court ruling stands. And it also ordered her and her family to pay the school district $47,000 to cover the cost of what it called a frivolous lawsuit. What's that about respect for victims? In this case, neither the school district, the court system, nor the nation's highest court had any for her at all. People in this country from Mexico, both legally and illegally, are sending more money home than ever before. Mexico's central bank says that amount increased 5.48% between January and March over the same period last year. In the first three months of this year, remittance from outside the country rose to $5.1 billion, a jump from $4.83 billion in the first three months of 2010. And Mexico's central bank said that remittance from March totaled $2.05 billion, significantly ahead of the one 
$185 billion in February. Somebody's got money. I've long called New York Mayor Mike Bloomberg America's number one idiot. Well, he proved why this week. He said all the immigrants should be sent to Detroit. He said it on Meet the Press, quote, you pass a law letting immigrants come in as long as they agree to go to Detroit and live there for five or 10 years. Now, he was referencing the fact that Detroit has lost 25% of its population in the last decade and now has the fewest people it's had since the 1910 census. Bloomberg's idea was at best met with cool response from Detroit. Speaking of Detroit, 47% of its population is functionally illiterate. That's what the Detroit Regional Workforce Fund says. It's Karen Tyler Ruiz says that means almost half the city's population is unable to fill out basic forms for getting a job, reading a prescription bottle, determining how many pills to take, you know, your basic everyday tasks. By the way, Detroit has one of the more expensive school systems in the country, once again proving you can't simply throw money at a problem and make it go away. More politically correct madness in Britain. A musician named Simon Ledger was arrested by police after he played Carl Douglas's 1974 hit Kung Fu Fighting just as a Chinese man happened to be walking down the street. The Chinese man made a complaint to the police of racial harassment, claiming simply playing the song was racial harassment as it stereotyped Chinese. Well, police treated this as a major crime. Ledger was arrested. He had his photo and DNA and fingerprints taken before being bailed. Now, the next day he was questioned and had to give a statement to the police who eventually decided no offense had been committed. But that this could even go this far is absolute insanity. Pity poor Britain, she is finished. And finally, Karen Butler of Toledo, Oregon, went to the dentist for a routine checkup and came out with a foreign accent. She said she came out sounding as though she was from Transylvania. I'm not making this up. Apparently, it's for real. It's something called foreign accent syndrome. There have been just 60 cases reported since 1941, and there's nothing she could ever do to get her old accent back. She says it's no big deal, apart from some surprised reactions. She says her life is mostly the same, and her husband agrees. We don't make it up, folks. We just tell you about it. Jeff Panamo and Gene Babulo, when we come back, stay here. It's Tarot on YLA.
right, we're back. And a uh, completely different uh, topic tonight. Uh, completely different from what we normally talk about on uh, this program. Joining me this week, Jeff Bonomo, who is in there and back again for almost nine years almost now. Nine years. And Gene Babula, who is with All Sleep Sunday. Gentlemen, I appreciate you both being here. Uh, before I go any farther, why don't you both tell us a little bit about uh, your bands. Jeff, start uh, nine years with uh, There and Back Again. Yeah, There and Back Again will be a, almost nine years. I think our nine year, nine year anniversary is in October, I believe. Nine years is a long time. There and Back Again is a dance rock party band. We play top 40 music. If you could do this to it, if it has a good beat, we play it. Abs uh, we now like we're watching you. This is what last Saturday night, right? This was uh, yeah, at Bottlenecks in West Hazelton. Great crowd, man. Uh, what we do is we do a lot of medleys. We medley about four or five songs together. We like to emulate what DJs do in dance clubs. Uh, uh -huh. Nonstop music, pretty much. Uh -huh. And everything is danceable. Everything is recognizable. But it's all different types of uh, music. It goes from the '70s all the way up to all the way up to now. The only thing that keeps them together, the only thing that keeps everything together is a nice, good beat. If you can dance to it, we play it. Now, Gene, tell me about uh, All Sleep Sunday. Uh, five guys, all veteran musicians, and uh, same as Jeff, we're playing stuff to put people out on the floor. Anybody wants to have a good time, we like to consider ourselves an MC of the, uh, of the event. So. Um, you also play with uh, Sterling Cook, a blues guitarist. Right. T tell me about that, because he has a new disc out. I don't know if you're on it or not. But. No, I didn't play on it, um, but he has Tommy Shannon from Stevie Ray Vaughan and Johnny Winter, and uh, Chet McCracken, who played with the Doobie, Doobie Brothers. Brothers yeah. um, he does a solo act, and he's been getting a lot of requests for the band. So we put uh, the band together to promote the, the, the new CD that's out called Slide Ruler. Uh -huh. And uh, we're going to be out and about soon with that. I know our first date is June 12th in Pottsville. Uh -huh. um, I'm looking forward to that. I played with Sterling in the past, too. So it's he's a, a lot of people have an opinion, but... You know what they say about opinions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, for, for both of you, uh, concerning, now Jeff, your band, uh, they're backing and released, I, it was, I guess it was a five-track EP a few yes. years ago. 2006. Uh, and I wrote about it in the Standard Speaker. I liked it a lot. Thank you. Um, and when it comes to original material, you don't play a lot in bars, right? Is is that how, because people aren't that familiar with it? Right. Is what that? what we decided to do was uh, once once in a while we would pull out one of our tracks and play it, but little by little we realized that we weren't there. The audience that comes to see us, they're not there for musical education. They're there to hear songs they know, to dance, and party. Uh huh. And and that's okay with us. So, uh, I'll sleep Sunday. Any original material? No, it's no? all cover. All cover. Um, many years ago, 100 years ago, I was a lead singer in a Wilkes-Barre bar band, and we did, we had a big phone hit with All Cranked Up in 1981. I love that song. And <laughs> I love it. We were called RST for the lead, the initials of the three guys who put the band together originally. And uh, when we went to record things, it was a very difficult process. Uh, we threw equipment in the trunk of my car, drove it to my drummer's living room in Lee Park, recorded it there on a two-channel reel-to-reel. And then trying to distribute it was a different story. I remember getting a bargain price from some factory in Allentown. I could have gotten 1,045 records for $300. I offered to put up half and the other three guys refused <laughs> to put up the other half. All that's changed, right? It's yes. a lot easier now, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, absolutely. All you need is a laptop now and you could record. We just did a new demo for a side project that we're doing called Ostrich Hat. It's a semi-acoustic side project. We did a demo on a, a, a Mac laptop. It took us maybe three, four hours to do a four song demo and it sounds way better than anything I produced back in the day when I was in high school that we had to pay three, four hundred dollars uh -huh. for like a one, a one song, four track demo that sounded horrible. <laughs> <laughs> It's changed completely. Is, is that, I mean, I, I listened to, I was not a great singer. I was okay and had to work at it. There were times I was flat. Not we got to do that, drop it a key, Tyrone's out of key, let's do it over. Now, computer technology and I sound like Steve Tyler or Mick Jagger. Yeah. I, and I, <laughs> is, has it gotten too easy or am I just that old and out of touch anymore? Uh. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> you can insult yeah. the host on this show. But, it's perfectly fine. If, if you use the technology 
correctly, it's great. I think it's auto tune is great if you use it correctly. Just to, that's what it's called. I couldn't yeah, think of the name. Auto tune. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, if you use it correctly. Now the the effect that they're using uh, in a lot of um, a lot of this new R and B and, and hip hop stuff, eh, the effect is getting a little grating on me. I think, but when you use it correctly, you can't notice it. It's just another tool. The, the first effect uh, that I remember of relatively recent vintage was when Nine Inch Nails put that effect on and everybody was doing that. I mean, even heard Jagger do that on the Stones. <laughs> like, I thought, this does not belong with the Rolling Stones. Do you go through, fa are there technological phases? Like every couple of years, there's a hip thing to use and oh, yeah. then it's gone and yeah. it's replaced yeah. with something else? Yeah. Go ahead. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> whatever, whatever. I, yeah, it, it's just like anything, you know. It's it's there and gone. Like the big fat drum sound, you know. Uh -huh. That's yeah. gone. That's been replaced by another drum sound, you know. It, it's 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 one of those. Well, things. I remember you for a tell. while the drum machine was the hot thing. Everybody had a drum machine, huh. and do we still still use them a lot? You actually made very good use of the one on because you mixed the drum machine with actual drums. Yes. It was hard to yeah. tell what was what. That was yeah. On, on on our on our EP, we uh, we used some drum loops. I used some uh, some drum uh, programs that I, I created. Some of them were. Uh, pre-recorded, some of them weren't, but we used them in a, a natural kind of way, I like to say. You know, it wasn't like over overbearing on the, the normal drums that I did put in there. So I'm, I'm, I'm cool with any kind of technology you can use like that. That's, I, I think it was Vadim who uh, ripped into critics, uh, old time critics, and I guess I'm one of them, uh, about the technology that it replaces musicianship. And he was like, no, it's just a new instrument that you have to learn how to play. Do you sure, yeah, I, I, I think so, what do you think? Eh? Uh, yeah, anything you can use to your advantage or to help you out is always a plus. Uh -huh. um, going with the uh, the vocal processings, anything f for your benefit is always a plus. Uh, All right, we're talking about uh, local music in the club scene. We'll get into that when we come back. Our guests this week are Gene Babula from All Sleep Sunday and Jeff Bonomo from there and back again. We'll be right back. All right, we're back on uh, this week's Tyrone. Our guests are uh, Gene Babula from All Sleep Sunday and Jeff Bonomo from There and Back Again. Um, I'm not really, all, I don't really patronize the bar circuit all that often anymore, but places to play. In the last few years, certainly, we've seen a number of clubs in Wilkesbury that were big. They're not there anymore. The Rhodes in Hazleton used to be one of the bigger clubs around. Yeah. 
it's not there anymore. Shenanigans was closed for a long time, though. It's simply reopened. Are there as many places to play as there used to be? No. No, not at all. <laughs> no? What? Why? <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I, I guess that's probably a question for bar owners more than yeah, musicians. Yeah. But because uh, I know when Jimmy closed the roads, he told me there were a bunch of things that went into it. The smoking ban hurt business, uh, the DUI enforcement, the down economy. There were a bunch of different things. Yeah, and you also got to look at, too, the other... Um the other forms of entertainment that are available to people to yeah. keep them home too. You know, uh, you got you know, home theater systems. You got video games. You got just you know, can load up your iPod and listen to everything you want to hear and never leave your living room. Right. right. <laughs> you, you can do a whole bunch of other things in the comfort of your own home. You don't have to go out. But that probably took a little bit out of it. But I think it is the stricter DUI laws. Uh, the smoking ban. I don't really think hurt us that much. Maybe at the beginning, but now I really don't see people caring. And that bar much. owners would tell you that it's that it still hurt, and there were like 400 bars that closed in mm -hmm. this state since it was uh, yeah. since it was instituted. <laughs> Something else I noticed. Well, you know what? Let me ask you first about uh, blues clubs because you play with uh, Sterling Cook, who's a blues act. And when uh, Chrisman used to have uh, blues night at the road, you'd get a small crowd. But I mean, even at that time, he was telling me there were fewer and fewer places on the blues circuit. Have you seen that? Is is that true? Yes, there is truth to that because if you go to clubs nowadays, everybody wants what they hear on the radio. Blues, I think, is... You hear on NPR, uh, maybe. Uh, that's uh, a college uh, yeah, radio, that's about it. Maybe an acquired thing. Uh -huh. um, I love it. It's more For me, it's more of a feeling than it is to... Anybody can throw a guitar on and just play. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the feeling for it, there's really no, you're just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. um, as, as far as blues clubs, they're, uh, they're out there. You just kind of have to sift your way through, feel your way through everybody else. Now, I want to note that I took both of you guys to be here this afternoon. We shoot the show Tuesday afternoon from work. Now, again, dating myself here, but in the 80s, any day in TNT, for example, a Big cover band, very packed them in all the time. Yep. Made a living solely as being Eddie Day in TNT. Didn't have side jobs. Uh, Jim Hackam in the uh, back doors. Just lived on the income from clubs. A, tr a tribute band from the doors. Sure. Is that possible anymore? Because most bands, the band is sort of like a side project. They have day yeah. jobs as right. well. Is that accurate? Like I call myself, I'm a weekend wannabe rock star. Uh, it, it is possible. Uh, it's not. It's how hard you want to yeah. push. If, if you really want that kind of lifestyle, you have to go out and get it. As anything, nothing comes to you. Yeah, um, I don't think there's many. There's, there's not as many people making a living just playing uh, cover, tribute, anything like that. Uh, I don't think there's as many right There was now. one I knew. Um, she was from this area originally, from uh, Dunmore. Kristen, I can't remember her last name now, but she, Qualic, I think. She headed up a group called uh, Kristen and the Noise that did pretty well around Philadelphia. And I think they're... I think they're still around. Oh, are they? Yeah, because I, I think, think they play around. like uh, the shore in, in yes. South Carolina and stuff like that. But that that just seems to be sort of rare today, you know? Like, there there were bands like that in the 80s that you don't see anymore. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of the five night a week things... Uh, even the clubs that do live music five nights a week, they're gone. Uh -huh. They're pretty much gone. You yeah. know, especially in this area, they're they're gone. I, unless you're going to play a casino, mm -hmm. uh, and even most of the casinos don't even do music five nights a week. They may do it three, maybe four. Mm -hmm. Let's break a little early. When I come back, I can ask you what you have to do to get in anywhere. And we'll talk about that <laughs> when we come back. Our guests tonight are Jeff Benomo from there and back again, and Gene Babula from Lost Sleep Sunday. Stay here. It's Tyrone on YLN.
All right, we're back on this week's Tyrone. Our guest today, talking about music, not politics. It's uh, Jeff Venomo from there and back again, and Gene Babula from All Sleep Sunday. Give you guys a little chance of uh, promotion here. You both have websites. If anybody's watching, they haven't heard your band, or they want to know more about you, where can they go? Yeah, absolutely. You can go to uh, tbarocks.com, is there and back again's website. And we do have a show, com uh, two shows coming up this week, and at Shakers and Hazleton, our, our trio, Side project is going on uh, May 13th at Shakers, and then May 14th, Bentleys and Ashley. Uh, there and back again. You can see us at Bentleys and Ashley. That's a sizable club. It's a nice place. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's on uh, Route 309, uh, right near the first intersection with uh, 81 in Hanover Township, just yeah. outside of just Ashley. Outside. Yeah. How about uh, All Sleep Sunday? Got a website? Uh, we do. It's facebook.com slash All Sleep Sunday. Uh, we have a show coming up this Saturday at the Red Rooster, and uh, following Friday we're at Shakers. That's formally shenanigans in Hazel. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> now, uh, I should have mentioned that from the beginning. That's okay. uh, let me return to original material uh, just for a second because um, the one thing that you never had, even when there were a lot of bands around here doing original material, was radio support. Now, I remember a couple of years ago, Leanne Burke got some airplay from Froggy 101. Yes. Back in the 80s, I remember Pat Godwin, KRZ, played Circle City. And going so far back, WIOK was a music station, and it played Craig Bevan's No Movies Tonight for a while in 1979. But other than Mike Nadock's Cellar Full of Noise, which is extremely important, and now yes. heard on WRKC at King's College 88.5 FM, no radio support at all. No radio, really. Mm -hmm. No. I mean, Mike played played our our uh, our EP, our title track, "Time Cures Everything." Thank you, Mike. But that's about it. Uh huh. Is that, is that frustrating? Because I, I mean, I remember as a top forty fan in the seventies, I used to listen to WFIL when I was a little kid because I heard so many Philly records and mm -hmm. I never heard anywhere else. They always played local stuff. Doesn't really happen anymore. Alan, Alan, Alan Stout played our our uh, record too. Yeah, that's right. He's on yes, the mountain. He did. That's he right. Did yeah. That. So thank you, Alan. Yeah. But that's about it. I, to, to me, that's very frustrating, and it know, is. That's, I guess that's one of the reasons I'm not programming radio anymore. When I did it, was news talk, not news. Talk. Gentlemen, I appreciate you for giving us a break from uh, politics this week. There and back again, Jeff Bonomo, and I sl all sleep Sunday. It's Gene Babula. That'll do it. We will not be here next week because of the election. We'll be back in two weeks with City Council President uh, or Vice President Jack Monday. If you can do it, it ain't bragging. We'll see you.